You do like it here, don't you, Coraline? Uh-huh. channel if you're new here welcome and yes it is spooks because it is officially October 1st therefore it is the Halloween season if you weren't here last year basically every weekday of the month of October I like to post a new Halloween themed makeup look so you guys have plenty of options for what you want to go as for Halloween plus it kind of gets my creative juices flowing and I get to do all the makeup looks that I might not do throughout the year and every Saturday I like to have a spoopy Saturday video which is basically just more of a casual video. It's either a challenge or a tag or just something fun to kind of break up all of the makeup tutorials. So there's usually only about four of those every year, which I think it's fun because I kind of get to do things that once again, I might not normally do on my channel. So anyways, since we are finally kicking off the Halloween season, I thought what better character to do than Coraline. Now, if you don't know about Coraline, basically Coraline is a little girl from her title movie called Coraline, and that is directed by Henry Selleck. A lot of people confuse it and actually think it's directed by Tim Burton, and I can see see the similarities, but they are two completely different movies, similar styles, but still very different. And what inspired me to do Coraline as my first tutorial of October is I saw the movie for the first time, I think it was like two years ago, and it's actually my best friend's favorite movie, and once I saw it, I just knew she was a character I wanted to recreate. And also, if any of you are thinking of going as Coraline for either Halloween or a cosplay or something, I'm actually going to show you how you can make her dragonfly hairpin. I know a lot of times, and I know because I looked it up, they don't sell it online and if they do it's really really expensive and if not it's handmade which is really amazing but I kind of took the opportunity to make my own and I absolutely love how it looks. I think it looks so realistic to her character and also translated into a real life dragonfly hairpin and so I'm just I'm really proud and I'm in love. So if you want to see how you can create that, I am going to give you the tutorial for that in this video as well. So anyways, with all that being said, if you're interested in recreating this Coraline makeup look and hairpin, then just keep watching. guys, so to get started, I'm going to be showing you how to create Coraline's iconic dragonfly hairpin. Now if you'd like to skip this step and move on to the makeup, then I will leave the timestamp right here for you guys, but if you'd like to learn how to make the hairpin, then just stick around. Basically, Coraline wears this hairpin in almost every single scene we see her in, whether it's night or day, whether it's reality, or if she's in the other mother's realm, she is almost always wearing this hairpin, so it's practically a part of her character. The products you're going to need is some clear satin urethane, a bottle of spray adhesive, some white model magic, wax rhinestone grabbers, some beads of your choice, small hair clips, two tones of gold glitter, clear coat nail polish, some acetone and a Q-tip, super glue, tweezers, some toothpicks, scissors, a hand fan, and some black felt. You're going to start off by taking a tiny ball of model magic and rolling it between your fingers so you have it in a perfect smooth ball before rolling it out into a long snake-like shape. You're then going to be taking another tiny piece of your model magic and between your thumb and your index finger, you're going to be smoothing it out into a tip to make the first wing. Now this actually takes a lot of time to kind of get the correct shape, which is why it's really important to have a reference photo because sometimes I would make the right wing and end up flipping it over and using it for the left wing instead because it ended up looking more realistic to the photo that way. And then I just kept playing around with this for about 45 minutes, to be honest, just because I have actually never played with Model Magic before. This was the first time I ever used it as a medium for a DIY craft, and I actually highly recommend it. You just definitely need to get used to it because it is very different than clay. Any indentation is sometimes incredibly hard to smooth out. So basically I was just playing around with getting the correct shape without having my um, absorbently long nails mess up the process. I'm then moving this over to wax paper just to make it easier to move, and I'm going to be taking a tiny bobby pin, and if you have any clay sculpting tools, I would highly recommend getting something like that. They do sell them in the crafting section, I just did not have it at the time. So I'm actually going to be taking a bobby pin and using this to smooth out the areas that I'm connecting all of the pieces of Model Magic, just so that they can meld together. I'm then going to be rolling out another very thin piece of Model Magic and splitting it into two, and I'm going to be making the little antennas for our dragonfly. 
I'm going to be doing the same thing, except I'm going to be applying these with the tweezers just so I can make sure that they are in the exact place I want them to be before blending out the edges with the bobby pin once again. I decided to go ahead and slide my little tweezers right under the antennas just to give that lifted look like it has on the hairpin in the photo, and then I decided to transfer this onto a tray. The Model Magic container says to allow this to dry for 24 to 72 hours, so I let mine dry for 72 hours just to be safe and make sure it was as hard as possible. 72 hours later, I am outside mixing two of my favorite glitters together. I decided to use two tones of glitter just to give it a more 3D look and kind of make it look a little bit more realistic so the light will catch the two colors in different ways. I'm then going to be spraying my Model Magic Dragonfly in the spray adhesive just so that the glitter will stick to it. And this is going to be messy. I personally hate spray adhesive, but it did seem like the best option for this and just the quickest. So I'm just going to be taking a tray and lightly sprinkling the glitter right over top of it before flipping it over and doing the exact same thing. Now, something I would actually go back and do is I would actually paint a light coat of gold acrylic paint onto the dragonfly as a base before going over it with glitter because there are some areas where a little bit of the white model magic peeked through and I would have to go back and keep layering on the glitter and it just saves a lot of time to kind of already have that gold base to start off with so that the glitter you don't really need so much, but also it is just going to make the whole process a lot easier for for you. Next, I'm going to be sealing my dragonfly with the clear satin urethane and just letting it dry overnight once again. Now, I actually ran a few tests on another piece of Model Magic that had some glitter on it to find the finish that I liked the most. So after I sprayed the clear satin urethane, I definitely wanted it to look a little glossier. So I decided to take out my Ulta Clear Coat nail polish and just pour that right over top before spreading it out evenly with the brush tip. It's really easy to do and I found that it gave me the perfect glossy look that I was looking for as well as helping to final seal the entire product. I once again let that dry overnight before we are moving on to doing our bead work. So this was a trial and error for me. Basically I'm going to be using my wax tip bead grabber to grab and hold on to the beads because my fingers are too big. This would have been way too tedious to do otherwise. So I'm just grabbing the bead and actually applying the super glue to the bead before applying it on to the dragonfly. A better way that I actually found out later on is to actually apply the super glue to the dragonfly, wait a few seconds before applying the bead. This just worked better because it was already sticking to the dragonfly so it would better grab the bead as opposed to trying to have the bead grab onto the dragonfly when you have the resistance of the wax currently holding the bead and nothing on the dragonfly to take it away. So for the body of the dragonfly, I'm going to be using these beads that I got from Joanne Fabrics, and if you can, I highly recommend getting them, simply because they are about $3 for a container, and you get so many of them, and they're absolutely stunning. This blue container I got has about two different colors of blues, so I'm actually going to be alternating between the darker and the light blue, just to give it a little bit more of a pattern and a little bit more dimension, because for the pink wings, I'm actually just going to be using the same color pink, so I wanted to help break up and add a little bit more detail to this look. So the beads that I am placing, I am actually placing horizontally, meaning that the holes are on the sides so you don't see it from a bird's eye view. I'm doing the exact same thing on the wings, except instead of having them right next to each other, I'm going to be spreading them out a bit so that I'm not using one too many beads and also to help make it look a little bit more like it does in the reference photo. So I'm just going to be continuing the pattern of applying some super glue dots in two different areas of the wings just so that one can be getting tacky while I move on to working on the other one. So I'm just going to be applying it with the wax tip, letting it stick, sometimes using the other end of a wax tip to help get the bead off of the wax tip so that it stays on the wing. And when you're done with all of laying down the beads, I like to personally take a little bit of super glue and apply it to the sides of the beads just to help keep it stationary in its place. We're also going to be letting that dry for a little bit before we move on to applying the clip. So I'm just going to be taking the small hair clip I have and cutting out a black piece of felt around it, sticking the piece of felt into the clip before gluing it down and applying it to the dragonfly. Now something important to keep in mind is you want the heavy thick part of the clip, the part that you actually squeeze onto, to be on the opposite side of the face aka the one that is closest to the back of your ear. Just because whenever you're applying it you don't want to be able to see the clip handle from the front. If anything you would rather it be from the back where the hair can hide it. 
Now the tricky thing with super glue is if you possibly use too much of it, it can sometimes have a tiny bit of a white cast. And I personally never use super glue that much. So something that I found is you can take a little bit of acetone on a Q-tip and actually wipe off some of the white cast. Now it doesn't get rid of it completely, but it definitely reveals the glossy surface of the bead a little bit better and helps get rid of the fogginess of the super glue. And that is the finished Coraline hairpin. I really hope you guys enjoy it. It is so cheap and easy to do and definitely is the perfect addition to any Coraline costume. And now we're going to be moving on to the makeup portion. So I'm going to be starting off by taking my Buckle Bunny Beauty Fringe Benefit Primer and applying that all over my face to fill in those pores. I'm then going to be taking my Tarte Ring first of this C foundation in light neutral and applying that all over my face with my Morphe E6 buffing brush. Next, I'm going to be taking my Buckle Bunny Cream to Powder Foundations in Caramel and Mocha and just applying that to the areas that I would like to contour before taking a clean fluffy brush and blending all of that out. Next, I'm going to be taking my ColourPop No Filter Concealer in number 14 and applying that to the areas that I would like to highlight. So that is under my eyes, under my cheekbones, my forehead, temples, cupid's bow, chin, and nose before blending that out with my ColourPop F5 Small Fluffy Brush. Once you're done with that, you want to make sure to set this. I'm going to be using my Airspun Translucent Powder, and then we're going to be moving on to eyeshadow. For that, I'm going to be taking my Smashbox 24 Hour Photo Finish Primer and just applying that all over my lids before moving on to eyeshadow. I'm going to be taking my Morphe and Jaclyn Hill eyeshadow palette, taking this champagne color, and just applying that right onto my brow bone. I'm then going to be taking this nude color and sweeping that right into the crease just to serve as a nice transition shade, and you want to make sure to blend this out as you go so that you don't have any harsh lines. I'm then going to be taking this walnut color and applying that right into the outer corner of the crease as well and softly blending it in towards the inner corner of the crease. I'm also going to be taking this camel color and doing the exact same thing to give it a little bit more of a yellow and neutral tone. And like I said before, you want to make sure to blend this as you go. We're then going to be going into this darker brown color and mixing it with a little bit of this mahogany and applying that in a V in the outer corner and once again making sure to blend and soften this look. Going into this plum color, I'm going to be applying that in the exact same area, but be a little bit more soft with this because you don't want to darken this look too much or overpower the eyes. I'm then going to be taking this dusty gold and applying that on the outer portion of the lid before going into this highlight color and really bringing it up onto the crease and blending it into the dusty gold. I'm then going to be going back into that gold and just lightly applying that right over top once again to help bring out that color. We're then going to be going back into this plum color, and since Coraline doesn't really have eyeliner, we're just going to be applying this onto the lash line to help smoke out and help define the eye area. We're going to be brushing away the excess translucent powder so we can move on to the lower lash line. I'm going to be taking this walnut color and applying it all over the lower lash line before going back into the plum color and applying it right on the outer corner of the lower lash line to help enhance that shape. I'm then going to be taking my Maybelline Lasting Drama Eyeliner in Nude and applying that to the lower waterline to not only help open up my eyes a bit, but to help make my eyes look a little bit more animated. Moving on to contour again, I'm going to be taking my Too Faced Cocoa Contour Palette in Medium and Dark Cocoa and just applying that over the areas that we contoured earlier to help set that contour, but also help deepen it up. I'm then going to be taking my Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer and applying that all over the areas that I contour to help warm up my face before taking my Physician's Formula Butter Blush to help add a little bit more color to my face and this is in Plum Rose. Speaking of adding color to our face, we're going to be taking our Buckle Bunny Beauty Blush and Honey Bunny and just applying that to the apples of our cheeks before moving on to our setting spray. I'm using my Morphe Continuous Setting Mist and just spraying that all over my face before helping it dry with my hand fan. I'm then going to be taking my BH Cosmetics Spotlight Highlight Palette, taking Dream and Glow, and just applying that to my cheekbones and my cupid's bow, and any area that I want to add a little bit more of a youthful glow. I'm then going to be taking my Tarte Lash Curler and prepping my eyelashes by curling them, before taking my Tarte Lights Camera Lashes Mascara and sweeping that through my eyelashes. I'm taking my Kiss Number 11 Lashes just to serve as a little bit more of a natural lash for Coraline, being that she doesn't have super bold eyelashes, but she is still young, so she does still have that nice, beautiful curl to her eyelashes. So my camera actually turned off while I was filming my lips, so the products I'm using is my Urban Decay Lip Liner in Deep, my Lorac Matte Pencil in Rose Brown, my Dolly Buxom Lipstick, and my ColourPop Lippy Sticks in Gold Digger. Whew, that was a mouthful, I'm so sorry guys. But anyways, we're going to be moving on to her fake freckles. For this, I decided to do a little bit more of the dotting motion. So I'm taking my Kat Von D Tattoo Liner in Madame X Brown and just applying it onto my cheeks before blending it out with my finger while the product is still wet. 
And last but not least, I'm applying a little bit of chapstick onto my lips just to help give it that natural glossy look. And that is the first completed Halloween look of 2018. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out my playlist for my other Halloween tutorials that I've done in the past. And I really can't wait to show you guys everything else that I have in store. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on the post notifications so you can be updated whenever I post a new video this week. So anyways, with all that being said, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye!